There is this current ongoing fully funded scholarship for both masters and PhD applicants in the University of Queensland. And in today's video, I'm going to be guiding you guys on how to apply for this scholarship and to apply very fast. This scholarship is open for both science and art students. So let's get right into it. So the first thing we do is to visit www.ikemanagency.com. So once we get to the website, you see scholarships and jobs. So you just click on scholarships and then you see a whole bunch of scholarships here. But um, we are focused on the research project scholarship being offered by the University of Queensland. So we click on that and uh, it takes us to this page where we see the scholarship host, the eligibility criteria that you want to be uh, willing to come to study in UQ. It's open to international students. It's applicable for uh, PhD and master students and all the other eligibility criteria. As you see the benefits here, scholarship value is $35,000 per annum. So this money is actually your living expenses. So the other fees will be paid by the scholarship. I mean like your school fees and every other thing will be handled. This is just your living expenses. And um, yeah, you see the link to apply. You click on the link to apply and it takes you directly to the University of Queensland uh, website. So here you see this is where you get the information on how to actually apply for this scholarship. Um, so you see here about the scholarship, you see the other information I actually read before now. So what we do is that we want to click on the view all projects available. So because this scholarship has been open for a while, some of the um, positions are getting filled gradually. So that's why I actually encourage people to apply as fast as possible so once you see this video once you view this video just try to make sure you make the application within as fast as fast as fast as possible as fast because every other person is applying so you also need to you know throw your heart into the ring so um some of them are actually closed so let's go to the ones that are currently open uh, okay before I, I show you that we see this scholarship is open for there are different projects that are supported here. We have those for engineering, information, computing sciences, health sciences, agriculture, and uh, most other ones, biological sciences. So what this means is that, let's say you finish your bachelor in microbiology or biochemistry, you are eligible to apply for these ones that the research area is health sciences. So um, like me, uh, um, my first degree was in surveying and geoinformatics, and now I'm doing satellite hydrology so that's how it works so as long as there is a correlation between your bachelor degree and the research project then you you are eligible to apply so some of them are actually close so let's go to the ones that are open so you see here for people who did biological sciences chemical sciences and health sciences this project is currently open understanding the molecular structures of proteins involved in rare disease so um how to apply for this project you see here when you when you look, read this you see the project description you read about the research environment and then you see the scholarship here the tuition fees covered just as i earlier mentioned so you don't need to worry about paying school fees or any other thing and then you also be paid your stipend every two weeks and this is based on the new minimum wage so the supervisor for this project is dr rosemary carter so we click on view her profile so what you need to do is to copy this profile this email address actually and then you send in your application i'm going to get to how your application should look like and how your project uh, proposal should look like but this is the email you need to send your application to so you can read about her works here her research interests her publications and see some publications, her grants, the grants she won, which enabled her to be able to advertise for this position, um, for this project. And uh, she also has other projects currently going on for her. So um, you see here, there is a preferred education background. When you are trying to apply, there are things that are taken into account, like your previous academic record, just as I mentioned, for example, this particular project for biological sciences. So someone who, who did uh, his bachelor's degree in, let's say, um, chemistry, chemistry, the person is highly welcome to apply, or maybe 
in a course that combines biology and chemistry, the person is also welcome to apply. And uh, your publication record, it's really encouraged you have a publication record. But even if you don't, it's important you just throw in your application because you don't know what might happen. It's important you throw in your application. So if you have honors and awards, that helps. And if you also have employment history, that also helps. So now how to apply? These are things you need to include in your application. So the first is a cover letter, you know, second is your uh, CV, you have your academic transcripts, uh, where you have um, details of your grades, the every course you took in the university, all the grades you, you, you had, you had A, B, C, D, and the scores, everything. So this academic transcript, what happens is that when, we, when uh, it's received here in Australia, it's converted Whatever your CGPA is, it's converted to the Australian framework so that we can know, I mean, so that the, the organizers can know the, uh, if you are eligible, if you are able to get to the threshold they are clearly required. So, and um, also evidence for meeting UQ's English language proficiency requirement like TOEFL or IELTS. So, I've uh, uploaded a, a video where I talked about how you can circumvent writing this particular test. So if you are interested, you can check it out. And also there is a little disclaimer here. Submitting the above documents does not constitute a full application for admission into UQ PhD program. So if you are selected as the preferred applicant, you will then be invited to submit a full application for admission. You can familiarize yourself with the documents required. So what this means is that for this application, you need to get the funding first. You need to get the money. Then once you get the money, you apply for the for, uh, of to UQ. This is actually unlike my own process because my own process, you have to get admission for the university first, and then you are eligible to apply for scholarship. So that is why it's important to always um, keep yourself updated to how the university operates or what exactly it is they need. So. Um, let me show you another example of another ongoing project here. We have um, the production performance of narrow road to the fruit orchards. So this is for those who their first degree was in maybe agriculture, uh, you know, food, science, things that deal with food, agriculture, yeah. So once you click on this project, you see the project summary. It's actually for a PhD. So you see, um, the scholarship is also the same thing. You have your living stipend for, of $35,000 per year, your tuition fee, and then the supervisor here is Dr. Likihan. And uh, what you need to do is to click on this, and then you can be able to see his email. Um, his phone number is here, but I don't know if you need to call him. I, I actually don't advise calling him because uh, professionally, it's better you relate with someone you don't know by email. So you only call the person if you are friends with the person, you are maybe closed one or like, let's say you've already established that relationship, then you can call. But first time meeting, please don't call. So you just send email to him and uh, you also see here how to apply. There is a cover letter, the CV, the transcript. Here you have list of referees, unlike the last project. So Every project is unique, right? So you have the list of referees here. If you have um, someone who can vouch for you that you are hardworking, you are credible, you are experienced, then you get the person to write a referee for you, a referee letter for you, and then the evidence of meeting this. So uh, the, the same disclaimer is here. So you, all, you get this scholarship first, and then you apply to the University of Queensland. But then if I may give a, a professional advice, I'll say, if you are applying for this particular project, you see here um, how to apply. You have the cover letter, CV, this, this, and that. But there is no um, uh, proposal. I think it's very important you include the proposal because that is what many people are looking at uh, reading. So um, I'll encourage you before you apply for it, before you write your proposal, Depend, uh, uh, based on this particular project, you have to read the project description, you have to read about the research environment, and then when you are developing your, pro your proposal, you try to tailor it, you try to make it um, relate to this particular project description or this project, because 
whoever is giving out the scholarship wants to be sure that you will be able to work on this project. So, I mean, it's a common practice here. I also went through the same process. So, what you do is that you have to understand what the person is looking for because these um, researchers, they get funding to carry out a particular project. So, they are required to show progress of that project based on the funding they got. So they are more inclined to hire students who show evidence of competency. So that is why it's important to do this. So um, I, I also the last advice I'll give is that this scholarship is, you see, there are lots of projects here, but most of them are closed because lots of people are applying. So if you see, OK, uh, I want to look at this one. You see this one, this project is closed. So whenever they are able to find someone uh, that will work on the project, then they close the project. So this particular one is closed. So the point I'm trying to make is that there is no time. Once you watch this video, please throw in your application. Throw in your application. Even if you don't get it, at least it gives you that little experience you need to be able to get the next one. So don't leave any scholarship opportunity hanging. Make sure you explore all of them. And trust me, once you're able to explore all of them, you must definitely get a scholarship. So we update this website regularly and frequently. So you can try to check it out as uh, frequently as you can. And then also you can follow us on our social media handles on Instagram, TikTok, and the Facebook, where I post them day-to-day -day activities of my life here as a student. And I also upload them. Um, details on different uh, Australian visa categories, the different types of visas and their cost, the processing times, you know, just very short clips, very short clips. So um, thank you so much, guys, for watching. If you've stayed to this point, I really applaud you. And please do like, comment, and subscribe to this video. And I will see you guys next week.